Jim Schwartz has become a popular name in Cleveland. As the defensive coordinator for the Browns, he's completely reinvented the unit on that side of the ball. While the roster featured plenty of talented standouts over the last couple of years, like Miles Garrett and Denzel Ward, they were always a group that had massive potential on paper, but fell flat on the field. Rarely was there a Sunday in Northeast Ohio where dads everywhere wouldn't throw up their hands and say, they're playing like a bunch of sieves out there. That's completely changed this season. Many around the league have taken notice of the Browns' defense this year. But after beating the previously undefeated San Francisco 49ers in Week 6, they become impossible to ignore. Before diving into how Cleveland locked up San Francisco, let's get a sense of just how historic this group has been. So far this season, the Browns' defense has been ridiculous. They're first in basically every metric. Yards allowed, points allowed, plays allowed, first downs allowed, and passing yards allowed. The only spot where they aren't dominating is in takeaways, where they rank 30th in the league with only four so far. But honestly, that makes this all the more impressive to me. They aren't just ending opponents' drives with turnover luck. No, they're legitimately smothering teams. They're saying line your best up with our best and we'll still be better. So far, that's been exactly the case. Consider this. Cleveland has lost the turnover battle in every one of their games, and yet they're 3-2. Teams that lose the turnover battle lose games, on average, roughly 70% of the time. They're giving their offense such a wide margin of error from being such a dominant defense. And it's not just remarkable for 2023. Historically, the Browns rank 6th in total yards allowed through 5 games. The most recent team above them is the 1971 Baltimore Colts. That name alone should tell you just how vintage Cleveland's defensive performance has been. Plus. Take a look at the turnover numbers again. The lowest team on this list had 11 takeaways by this point. Again, I'd argue that although this is a bad stat for a defense, it actually makes what they're doing even more incredible, especially against more efficient modern offenses. And then, this should come as no surprise, but this is by far and away the best Browns defense since they returned in 1999, crushing it on yards allowed, passing yards allowed, and then tied for the least amount of points allowed. When we zoom in on last year's Browns from 2022, we see a particular area where this season's Browns have made a massive improvement, and that's on run defense. The unit ranked 25th in rushing yards and yards per attempt in the league to now being 4th best in these categories this year. Focusing on this improvement in the run game is where we'll start our breakdown of Cleveland's defense against the 49ers in Week 6. Immediately on the first drive, they show off their aggression in plugging run gaps and swarming to the ball carrier. Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa is the driving force on this play, and you'll see him throughout this film just generally being an absolute monster. On this one, he presses up against the line to shoot the B-gap between the right guard and tackle, while fullback Kyle Juszczyk motions back and forth in the backfield. At the snap, JOK just slams his way through the right guard, he opens up space for himself, getting the guard sideways, and never stops moving upfield towards Christian McCaffrey. He forces CMC to change his direction to the outside, and Zadarius Smith is there to clean it all up. To be fair though, Smith does commit a face mask penalty here, so this ends up being a positive play for the offense, but that doesn't change the fact that they got to CMC in the backfield. And then here's another great run fit by the Browns, and bonus points because it doesn't end in a face mask penalty. This play is made possible by the excellent communication and confidence this group has when facing offensive motion, a testament to what Schwartz has brought to this group as a leader. Watch his defenders play catch with the motion men, and, more importantly, how linebacker Sion Takitaki stays put in his positioning. He will essentially act as a stunt for the pressure Garrett gets off the left tackle Trent Williams, as he pushes around Williams, Taki Taki swallows up George Kittle, leaving a wide open path for Grant Delpit to stop this play in its tracks. Cleveland's communication on defense was the thing that continued jumping off the tape to me. Like here, where they get more motion from SF, and you see everyone on Cleveland's hands go up and helmets swivel all around. And I'm not saying that you don't see this with other professional defenses, but it's just the intensity in which they talk to each other. The pre-play feels as much a part of the actual play. On this one, the Browns kill a screen in the backfield. Again, Garrett sets this one up by demolishing his matchup with Williams. 
He throws him out of the way, disrupts McCaffrey's path, and leaves a hole for JOK and Anthony Walker Jr. to clean up the mess he made. Garrett even gives McCaffrey a little bop on the head, like, nice try. All game, the Browns made life miserable for Brock Purdy, who couldn't get anything going all day. He ended with 12 for 27 passing for 125 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. And it gets even more depressing when you realize 71 of those 125 yards came after the catch. That one interception was Purdy's first of the year. It came off a pass that was behind his receiver, with Brown's corner Martin Emerson Jr. in perfect position to snatch it. He plays his leverage perfectly here, hanging on the back hip of Brandon Ayuk, knowing safety Juan Thornhill is protecting the middle part of the field behind him. And the defense wasn't just capitalizing on Purdy's mistakes, they were giving him nowhere to go. Whether it was Emerson Jr. playing press coverage against Debo Samuel to deny this early quick slant pass, or on this play, where the Browns completely sniff out the screen to use check. Defensive end Alex Wright gets off the line and hits Juszczyk, but gets suspicious immediately when Juszczyk tries to pull away. Rather than pull off and try to go for glory with the sack, Wright stays engaged with his block. Check out Purdy's eyes, where he's looking to throw to that area. When it's swallowed up, the pressure is already getting to him, and he can't make any other decision than to try and run away. And he doesn't get very far. And by the last couple of possessions, the entire 49ers offense just seems shook. Check out how the line ends up blocking the wrong way on this play, leaving JOK a free hit at Purdy. Then, on the very next play, we get a patented Schwartz pressure package that works off the line's confusion just seconds before. Here, the magic happens between Garrett, Taki Taki, and Cameron Mitchell. The Browns start on the line with four defensive linemen, with Garrett on the left side. Understanding how he's been getting through all contest, the 49ers make the safe decision and block towards his direction. But Garrett actually drops out into coverage. All the while, Taki Taki and Mitchell blast towards the 49ers line on the other side. This leaves the Niners with three guys to guard against two defenders on the right side, and only two guys to protect against three blitzers. With Mitchell taking a wider path to occupy Williams, Taki Taki gets a free shot at Purdy. Thankfully for him, and kind of impressively, he gets it out on time and picks up some yards on a second and 21, but the drive would ultimately end in a three and out, stalling yet another possession late in the game. When Jim Schwartz came to Cleveland, he was asked what he'd like to see from his defense. Rather than shooting for a specific metric or style of play, he answered with intangibles swagger, and badassery. He wanted to create an environment where his team celebrates each other on every single play. And why wouldn't they? They're playing alongside guys who are on one of the most historic modern defenses to start the year. Altogether, Schwartz has created an infectious atmosphere for his defense, where they communicate like crazy, celebrate like show-offs, and back it all up by playing like absolute monsters. It's a defense with attitude, it's a defense with legitimate swagger. And if their performance on the field is any indication, they love playing for their DC almost as much as they love playing for each other. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do give it a like if you did enjoy it, and please consider subscribing to the channel so you can catch the next one. Thanks. Bye.